We are here. So I'm saying podcast. We tried to enter this. This is the third time. So I'm just getting right into it. We're sitting down with Olivia Spaliga, two-time Olympian. She's in Eindhoven for the ISL playoffs. Olivia, what's up? What's up, Coleman? Not much. Yes, we're here in the Netherlands. It's great to be here. And thank you for having me. big news first uh you're in phoenix now right i am yes uh, i am you're training with arizona state we you know from the outside we know your teammate Haley made the move from georgia to phoenix um tell me about this what what made this right for you what made the timing right is this something you've been thinking about for a while yeah um yeah it's really great to have Haley there um it feels very familiar um, definitely having an old Georgia teammate, not only team USA teammate, um, but having her, she was a year older than me in school. So, um, I take to heart a lot of the things that she says, and I know she loves it out there. Um, but this has been kind of brewing in my mind over the past couple months, you know, after this summer, um, after the games, um, even earlier this year, I had, uh, the opportunity to talk with, have, you know, little conversations here and there with Bob, um, who is the coach at ASU, which is really nice. (laughs) As you guys all know, I'm like saying things people already know. Uh, But no, you know, I had a pretty nice reflective period um, after the game. So I was able to go home. Uh, I didn't really do much of anything for like five weeks. And I was just thinking about what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. And it kind of seemed like a smooth transition um, because Jack Barley, the coach at um, University of Georgia is good friends with Bob. It's a very easy connection to make. and I love it there. So far, I've been there uh, for a month now. And um, it's a great change of pace. I think change is good. I've been at Georgia for like eight years, you know? So I think it was just time to kind of try um, to switch up the environment. Mm-hmm. Um, who, what athletes have you been training with? I know, I think Ryan Held just moved there as well. I know Haley's there. I, I feel like they have a pretty stout post-grad group. Um, what, what do practices look like for you? Practices look like um, we train with the college team. So we are, we are in the thick of that. Um, Maybe that'll change. Maybe it it won't, but I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to be with the college team. I was just getting into shape, you know, these past uh, three weeks still kind of am, you know, building that base, building different base, you know, it's pretty similar structure, I'd say to what I'm used to, but um it's definitely taking me a minute to adjust to, to new things. I'm just trying to absorb um, and observe all that I can. Um, but no, it's, it's, there's no real grad group. It's, it's just like the three of us um, kind of dispersed throughout ASU's team. Gotcha. Have you, yeah. have you trained with any particular uh, groups? Are you, are you doing long aerobics, Bob Bowman sets? Are you doing Herbie sprint stuff? What's, what's it been like so far? So I haven't gotten the chance to go over to Herbie sprint group, um, <laughs> yet, <laughs> oh, man. which is okay. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm training with, uh, Bob's group. I'm actually, I share a lane with two sprinters, Jack Dolan and Patrick Salmon, who are two guys on the team. Jack Dolan, um, Missouri native shout out. <laughs> yes, let's go. Um, the lane six crew, you know, and uh, so, like I said, I'm I'm just observing. I'm just learning, and I'm I'm, you know, just getting my training in. And I get a chance to train with the girls who do power with Rachel um, uh, once a week. So I've been able to do that as as well, um, and just. I'm getting a mix of everything, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Bob allows you power once a week. Nice. He, he does. He <laughs> does. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Hold on. So lane six is the average height in that lane, like six, four. Yes. Yeah. So it's like lane six. You can only go in if you're six foot or above. <laughs> it's the, the requirement <laughs> must be yeah. this tall to train in this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like an amusement park. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. cool. What do you, so I've, I've been to Athens 
on a, a few different times for, for work. I've been to Phoenix a few different times for work, two of my favorite places in the entire country. Um, so just on a personal note, what do you think of Phoenix coming from Athens, both just incredible places to eat and drink and be merry? Yes. Um, they're great. They're totally different. Um, Athens is, is like the, the college town, you know, I feel like the town is kind of just built around the university, whereas Phoenix, Tempe, Scottsdale, they're their own cities, you know, and ASU happens to be there. Uh, so it's that type of vibe. It's very chill. The weather is beautiful. We get to train outside, you know, I'm still again, getting the lay of the land. Like I am very fresh. So I'm, you know, my, my predominant focus is just going to practice and every day feels very new. So, um, like I said, I'm like learning not only the environment and the people and the practices, but yeah, just my surroundings. And, um, I'm, I'm very like stimulated, you know, uh, kind of every day. Uh, Cause at Georgia, of course, as beautiful as Athens is, um, and as the team is, and as the coaching staff is, I knew it uh, all, it seemed like, you know, so, um, I kind of knew what to expect and, and here at ASU, I don't, uh, so it's very fun for me. Yeah. So I, I'll let you know, I'll let you know if I have, or if I frequented, uh, yeah, not whole foods. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we didn't have a whole foods in Athens. That's like my go-to mm. spot so far, but I'll, I'll get to it. Other, yeah, I know. I know. Crazy, dude. Like, <laughs> very exciting. Dude, I hear you. I'm from a town with no Whole Foods, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a that's a game changer for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, cool. That's that's great to hear. I'm super excited to see how that goes for you. Just again, I love Phoenix. It's Arizona State's a good place to be. It seems like. Um, you mentioned you had some time to reflect on your games. Uh, let's talk about that you know, it was your second Olympic games. You were a veteran. You had probably a different role than you did on the team in and out of the pool, your first games in 16. Um, what in your reflections, what came up for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I really didn't, like I said, I didn't do much at all for five weeks. I, I chilled. I, um, hmm, a lot, a lot. Uh, I reflected on a lot. Um, I think it was a a pretty elongated five years for everyone. I'm no exception to anything. You know, my, my, everyone's experience is definitely different and individual, but I think it was a different type of break this time around for many athletes than the regular four year cycle. Um, So I think I just needed to take a pause and to just give myself rest. Um, but I think what I came to the conclusion, I, or I came to the conclusion that I had, um, needed something new, I think, um, in my training. And, um, I wanted, I was challenged every day at Georgia, you know, but I wanted a different type of challenge as well. Um, I don't know. I, I, I found that, how do I say this? Like, I found that I, yeah, just wanted a a new challenge, something fresh, a new set of eyes, a new uh, environment. You know what I mean? Somewhere where I could continue to learn. Um, And like I said, I was challenged every day at Georgia and that program made me, you know, a two-time Olympian. I was, um, first time I made it, I was a junior. Second time I was, couple years out of college, but in the same town. So it was amazing. But like I said, um, you know, I feel like, yeah, it was this time to change hats, like how, you know, um, and, and just, yeah, get a different perspective, um, is I think what I, what I wanted. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like taking it back to the games, um, what, what was your experience like in Tokyo? Um, especially swimming an event and then having seven days, right. To just be there, kick it. (laughs) Yeah. Be there. Soak it in. Yeah. I know it was very, we, 
I finished yeah the first day and had the whole week to experience and soak in all of the emotion of all my teammates and to hopefully have been there for those who were obviously um, competing the the next you know the following days after me. Um, what was my experience in Tokyo like? It was amazing. It's it's amazing to go to the Olympic Village not only one time but a second time and to actually feel what it felt like after not knowing whether or not the Olympics were going to happen and then going there and seeing this community, like everyone come together, um, which I definitely felt in, in 2016, but this time it was a little bit different. Um, everyone's just kicking it with everyone. You know, you walk down the village and you just are like, this is awesome. You know, you have like Serbia hanging out with Australia, hanging out with, you know, Argentina, you know, just, uh, playing cards in the in the courtyard or playing rugby in the courtyard I mean it was that as an overall experience like that was really awesome to um, see but then in terms of swimming like what my teammates were able to accomplish and do after such a hard year and such a strenuous cycle was like electric um, seeing all their celebrations, what they were able to do, re reaching their goals. I mean, it was like, there's really nothing like it. It's hard to put into words, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I just was there in any way that I could be. Like you said, that was done the first day. So I was in the stands cheering everybody on. Um, and it was awesome. Yeah. Did you have a, a standout moment? maybe not, you know, of something that someone accomplished, but of a, of an interaction or a connection or, or something that sticks out that, that you personally were a part of. Hmm. That I personally was a part of, I don't know that I was, um, personally a part of any, Hmm. There's so many experiences that I can just like sprinkle in, like from being in the stands that i think I'm personally a part of, you know, if I like let a cheer, you know, like, like yeah, I had so much to do with that, but man, oh my gosh. Like Being cheers are important. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, uh, yeah. I mean, so many come to mind. I could list off like five or six right now, but, um, I think it was just, yeah, man, like Bobby's 800 free, for example, like us getting rowdy in the stands, um, seeing Chase and Jay go one and two in the 4 a.m. was unreal. Uh, seeing Caleb win gold in the 100 free was unbelievable. Um, all of these experiences, like as a whole, just like show you how tough Team USA is. And so it's just awesome to be a part of that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> go back a little further to trials. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, you talked about a lot of your seeing your teammates after this hard five years reach their goals. Um, I want to talk about you. I want to, I want to get the Olivia story, you know, okay. after, after trials, how were you feeling about where you were at with the goals you had heading into that meet? You know, I, I mm, would lie if I said that I was like super, you know, like I did everything I wanted to do because to be honest with you, trials was pretty tough. I was super happy that they were able to happen. Cause like I said, you know, we didn't know if trials were going to happen. I think like earlier this year, it was like the Olympics might be canceled and the IOC was having meetings. We're like, man, we're going to go through this again or something. We had no idea what to expect. We were always on our toes. Yeah. So of course we're like super grateful that they were able to happen. But, um, the hundred back was first, uh, getting third was tough. It was, it was like, okay, I'm going to have to kind of let this roll off my back because I have a couple more events left to go. Um, but yeah, to say that I expected anything would be wrong. Like you, you don't know what to expect when you go to trials, but I was definitely gearing up for that hundred back. Um, getting third, I had to shake it off and get prepared for the hundred free. And, um, and I was just very thankful that I, I just had a different type of fire. I was like, um, I'm making this team, you know, uh, I'm, I know I'm capable of doing so. So, um, it was definitely a fight. It was a battle each round prelims, semis and finals. Um, so having made it was very, um, rewarding. Like, I don't think it really hit me until we did our whole walkthrough. You know, you like go up on the platform, you spoke to Brendan Hansen, you go back down on the stairs and then you have your, um, 
like interviews with swim swim. And at that point, I remember like looking out into the pool and realizing that this was, I made my second Olympic team and I just started crying because I was like, damn, that was tough. You know, um, I don't necessarily know what that um, taught me yet. I think it taught me that I can do it, even if I'm throwing a curveball or something doesn't go my way, um, mm-hmm. that I'm able to kind of still step up and do it. Um, but I still, I'm still learning as to what I can do to better myself, you know, next time or next meet or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, uh, coming into that meet, we swim, swim, certainly, certainly put some hype around you and the 200 free. Um, Mm. and I am curious after missing, you know, after getting third in the hundred back, was there any doubt or were were you able to push it off pretty easily that you opted for the hundred back as opposed to the 200 free? You know what? I, I have no regrets. I feel like everything laid out the way it was meant to lay out. I trust my coaches. I trust, um, any, um, way that it was supposed to go was the way that it, that it went. Um, doing the two free would have been a lot of fun. I think, uh, just to see what was up, you know, I feel like I had a pretty steady progression throughout this season. I mean, I just started swimming the two free, you know, um, I think it can only get better, you know? Uh, so thank you for that. But, um, we'll see as, as, as time goes on, like what, what that'll look like. Um, uh, but no, no regrets. I'm, I'm a backstroker, you know, I'm a freestyle and a backstroker. So I, I knew I could do something in the, in the, in the hundred back. Um, Reagan and Ryan just had incredible swims and it, it happens like that, you know? So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so then again, y- you have trials, you have Olympics and then coming off of that, you take five weeks and then you get right back into ISL. Uh, yeah. How was that? <laughs> um, I think we all know how it went. You know what I mean? If you look at the results, <laughs> you can see, uh, <laughs> but no, it was, it was good to kind of get back to it because like I said, I was home for five weeks. I was, um, with my family, which was great to have my you know, support system there and, and just the time away from the pool, but then coming back to ISL ready or not, I was really thankful that I was able to um, have my teammates there who are going through the same things that I was, you know, it was, it was half of us who had made the team, half of us who hadn't, uh, but it was still a very like um, communal um, hype up and understanding to be around just athletes in general. Cause I'm always around my family, but I don't know that they necessarily knew truly what I was um, feeling or what the next steps should be or how I should feel, how one should feel after after a summer athlete or not though, you know, like anyone who went through this whole past year, um, uncertain what's going to happen, having to deal with the challenges that this year presented and then be like, Oh, okay. Everything's kind of back to normal. So now we have to, I guess, you know, um, so everyone, I feel like needed that break, but to be around people who are going through the same thing, whatever your group is, wherever your friends are at, you know, um, I think it's important to be around those people. So although the swimming part wasn't there, it was good to be. Um, Cause man, I mean, I, I took five weeks off and then on that sixth week I had to travel to ISL. So um, I was in the pool about a week. I do not recommend that to anyone, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, I'm so grateful that ISL gave us the opportunity to, to be able to race and to be able to be with our teammates. Um, yeah, the semifinals are definitely going to look different than what the regular season looked like. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's, that's great. That seems good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So I don't know if you noticed this, but we mm-hmm. put up a, uh, a question option on our Instagram story for this okay. very interview. So the people, so that your fans could ask you some questions. Uh, so we're going to take some questions. Am, I'm getting a call from my hotel room. Do you think I could answer it really quick? Take your, take your call. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Later would be great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 
I hear you. Shout out to uh, shout out to Finish Swim. My suits just arrived at the hotel. <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry. Nice. <clears throat> yes. Um. All right. We're taking a few questions from uh, from Instagram callers right now. Okay. Question okay. number one: Will you ever swim an event other than free or back at a pro swim series or ISL meet? Dang. Um. I don't know. Maybe I do a hundred IM at ISL. I feel like that would be the one, right? Yeah, that would be the one. I think that would be, <laughs> that would be a, what do you think you could go in a hundred IM short course meters? I would hope that, man, am I too, am I cocky to say I would hope to go under maybe like a minute, maybe one on one. My breaststroke, I just don't even know what my breaststroke would be. I think my, my pullout is good, but I, I don't know, man. It's like 15 meters after that, I guess. Yeah. What, what do people, what do fast girls go like 57? Yeah. I think I go a minute. I think I go a minute. Yeah. Oh, I think you go 59. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Favorite backstroke drill. Favorite backstroke drill. Um, I love a three right, three left. Um, I love double arm back as a, a loosen down drill. Um, anything to do with your rotation, like shoulder to chin rotation, uh, drill is like the best. Okay. Great answer. Favorite food. Any type of burrito breakfast burrito at the top of the list. Okay. Nice. Oh, is it, did you vote on which shirts you wore with, during the Olympics? Did we vote on them? No, the schedule was <laughs> given to us. <laughs> it is not a democracy. <laughs> it is not. No. Um, what do you eat before meats? Do you have any pre-meat food that you stick to? Um, yeah, I think the general staple is oatmeal. So whether it's before prelims or semis or finals, that's like my go-to. Uh, either that or a peanut butter jelly sandwich, something like a banana always, 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 always. Key. Key, key, key. <laughs> Is Caleb Dressel the most gifted athlete that has ever existed? Gifted would be the wrong uh, word to use. I would say uh, one of the most, you know, yeah, because I don't want to throw shade to any other swimmers who I have mad respect for. I have so much respect for Caleb. He's uh, up there with being one of the most dedicated and hardworking athletes. Um, his gifts come from his perseverance and his dedication to the craft and learning. He's very nerdy about, you know, swimming. So I don't know if you've ever seen his breakdowns, you know, on YouTube and stuff. He's he's a student of the game always, and that's why he's so... Um, that's why he's amazing at what he does. Great insight. Nice. Uh, secret <laughs> nerd, <form> like <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. one's for you, Caleb. Uh, <laughs> secret formula to be as chill and awesome as you. Oh, thank you. Um, secret formula. Um, I feel like the only secret formula that is is that I'm being myself so whatever that you are whatever that one is just be that just be you be confident and be secure with who you are and um I mean it's a great compliment but I don't want you to be like me I want you to be like you you know what I mean nerd yeah <laughs> Sorry. just kidding I think that's yeah, great yeah, advice. Yeah. that's that is Thanks. amazing advice um and I don't, I don't think you should do it any other way. Anyone. All right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we'll wrap with this. We, we got about five more minutes. Um, okay. Is the bag eyes emoji secured big eyes face emoji with lock <laughs> emoji for the upcoming ISL playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's always on lock when it's the Cali Condors. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. Um, stay tuned. Tomorrow, our first semifinal match, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're coming fresh out the gates against DC Trident, Energy Standard, and Team Iron. So, we'll see. Bada bing, bada boom. So, um, yep. 
we, yeah. So give me a little insight as to just how you've felt in the water the last few weeks. Now that you're kind of getting into rhythm, getting back in shape and, uh, traveling to Eindhoven, you know, how do you get ready these last few days? I know you said you're just singling. So what are you doing to prep, um, for that first match that is tomorrow? Yeah. So I'm just singling today. I've been doing, uh, three doubles a week just to <laughs> make that clear. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I, yes, I, we're, we're, I'm prepping. It's, it's a lot of how you just said rhythm, feeling the water, being able to actually feel like you have control over the water. Um, as opposed to when you're out of shape, I feel like a lot of people can relate to feeling like a noodle when you're in the water and you haven't been in it for a while. So it was a process getting back into it for sure. Um, now that I'm finally, I'm still getting there. Um, I definitely feel better. I feel stronger in the water. Um, I'm, I'm ready to see where I'm at at this point in the season um, with what I have done. Like I said, it's been like three weeks plus um, of training. So definitely feeling better and see. So you've gone through this, you've gone through a season of ISL before you've gone through a few, obviously, but <clears throat> what do you feel like you get from these big chunks of racing? You know, you're going to do what three matches in three weeks, I think something like that. Yeah. something um, like that. Oh, and then the play the, or the final. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, as opposed to just a block of training where you're training for months at a time with one or two meets sprinkled in, what do you feel like you get, um, from these big chunks of racing and do you prefer that? Do you prefer the training? What's the balance for you there? Um, I think the balance is, you know, having this chunk and then going back to work and then having like another meat, um, meat sprinkled in. I mean, it's obviously different than like a tier pro swim series. Cause like you said, it's three meets in three weeks. Um, people are even coming off of like world cup and European. So they've been like racing, 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 racing. Everybody's different. Um, but what I think the benefit of, of racing like this is, is especially with ISL, we're able to race international competitors, those that we don't get to see until the summer um, or whatever big meets happen, like long course big meets happen. Um, but it also gives you the opportunity to, to tighten things up and to do your race prep and to do your, um, yeah, like what it feels like when you're, when you're competing. Um, all the routines that you go through to kind of just stay sharp with that. But it's, I don't, I don't believe that it should be much different than when you race at practice, you know, behind the blocks, you want to get into that mindset and then carry that over into a meet rather than like practicing at a meet and then, you know, only doing it there. I think it's important to do it at practice too. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's a good like power uh, type of, workout uh thing you know to have three meets so back to back um but it's good training for i think like when you have like one week of a meet um when it comes to like worlds and, and the games and stuff yeah. yeah is there anyone in the isl field you know you mentioned that international competition that really gets your blood pumping when you get to race them? <laughs> everybody does everybody gets my blood pumping uh all my competitors are amazing um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all great. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see them again and, and race them all again. Is it a different feel if you get to race, you know, when you're racing women, as opposed to when you get to race the men in the mixed events? Yes. Mixed Millie Relay in Naples, bro. Uh, I let off backstroke next to Justin Rest and Guido. <laughs> From London Roar. <laughs> when I say, I was like, okay, you know what? I, to the first 25, maybe. I don't know what I was thinking, dude. Like, oh, maybe, you know, my underwaters like aren't. <laughs> what a humbling experience. <laughs> the waves that these two monsters of men like produce. I get out of the water. I'm, I think I, I want to say I touched like last or something. Um, the waves these guys had. So I come out of the water. And I'm, you know, like kind of bent over. I'm just like, man, that was something, you know? Uh, and Guido comes up to me, he's like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm not okay. You're like six, seven, two thirty, and you created a tsunami for me to swim through. But yeah, 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 I'm all right. Uh, you know what, Mr. Guido? <laughs> <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you. Like, no. <laughs> no, it was chill. Um, 
so that's like fun but so it's fun to you know like oh okay i'm gonna like race some guys but oh my gosh no i i like racing women <laughs> Yeah. I'll stick to my own gender. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. 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 Um, cool. 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 <laughs> we figured that one out. Solved that mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Olivia, it's it's always great catching up with you. I really appreciate you taking the time today to sit down. Got your first match with the Cali Condors tomorrow, 1 p.m. Yes. Eastern, like you said. Um, any parting thoughts before we sign off today? No, thank you so much. Um, that's all I got. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.